Hello PHS, this is Robbie Owens and Liv Rhodes bringing you this week's episode of Cougar Media News. Envirothon has had an outstanding year at PHS. Palmyra captured six of the top ten scores in the county, including first and second place overall. Palmyra also came in first place in four of the five stations, aquatics, forestry, soils, and current issue. The first place team, consisting of Jake Klusenek, Abby Francina, Jacob Wagers, Molly Gerhardt, and Abby Reinhardt, went on to represent Lemon County at the Pennsylvania State Competition. Palmyra Area High School had another outstanding showing at the 2021 Lebanon County Envirothon Competition. Palmyra captured six of the top ten scores in the county, including first and second place overall. Palmyra also captured the first top score in four of the five stations, aquatics, forestry, soils, and current issue. Mikey Adams filled us in on how the Envirothon teams compete with one another and what went on this year. So we take these five tests and then everything's scored up and then we uh, we take a figure out who the winner is and you know it's, it's been Pulmire for the for the for the pretty uh pretty recent past of like and almost 20 years or something like that I don't know exactly but you know, it's all thanks to Mrs. Mason of course and her good coaching so then when you have the team that wins you end up uh, going to states so uh, I wasn't on that team but it was that is definitely a pretty good team of smart kids and then they go and do another set of tests against all these different schools throughout the state and they also have to make an oral presentation which involves them you know doing a lot of research and then they this year obviously due to COVID going to record it instead of giving it but you know all the all the kids going to states and all the kids that competed definitely put a lot of work in this year so it's, it's good, good stuff. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, Envirothon has changed significantly over the last two years. Most instructions and meetings were held virtually this year, but they are hoping that next year they'll be able to return to hands-on and on-site field trainings. This has been Robbie and Gabe reporting for Cougar Media News. Congratulations to all members of Envirothon on all their achievements this school year. Reminder, there will be an outdoor art show with food trucks today from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. around the turf field. Come out and support the artists of PHS. Last year, staff members Ashley Weber, Cameron Ware, and Gunther Gillespie got the opportunity to work on a documentary about the history of Campbelltown. Let's check out what progress they've made so far and how you can view the film Voices of Campbelltown, A Glimpse into the Past. So this documentary is about the people and history of Campbelltown. So we interviewed about five elderly people who have lived in Campbelltown almost their whole lives, and we just got their views of the town and all the memories they've made in it. So to make our documentary, we went to the Historical Society in Lebanon, and we gathered a bunch of pictures, and we took pictures of that for extra B-roll. We interviewed the different people in the town, and we also visited things like the churches. We went to the Rising Sun, and we also collected B-roll and drone footage, which was really cool. So yeah, we're just going to put it all together with a voiceover of a narration of basically the town and what it's all about. So I'm really excited. So we started gathering all the information for this project in about December of 2019. And with COVID that really set us back, but now we've gotten back on track and we all started working together as a group. So we are now planning on showing it to all the elderly people we interviewed so they get a chance to see it in June. Their documentary, The Voices of Campbelltown, A Glimpse into the Past, was highlighted in The Voice, a magazine recently published by PSEA this May of 2021, and will be showing in the Traditions of Hershey June 15th at 3 p.m. This is Paige Serba and Gianna Merker reporting for Cougar Media News. Seniors, yearbooks are available for pickup today from 10.30 to 12.30 at the back atrium entrance. All other grades will have the chance to pick up their yearbooks next week in the cafeteria during lunch. 
The girls and boys track team has had an amazing season this year. Let's check in with Robbie and Gabe to see what things are looking like in the postseason. The track and field team had an amazing season with having so many awesome performances and winning the Mid-Pen Keystone Division. Athletes who qualified are now focusing their attention on the postseason, which involves running at the Mid-Pen Championship meet districts and states. I talked to Xander Topos about the wrap-up of the season and how practice changes during the postseason. We've had an undefeated season. Um, we're division champions. We had that off year where we couldn't compete, but we came back stronger. Coaching's been absolutely fantastic. Everyone on the team's been getting along. There's been no problems. Regular season, we all work together as a team, and it's fantastic. But when we hit postseason, not to be selfish or anything, but we kind of focus on our own events and what we have to do, except if you're on relays. You kind of just work together with those three other people. That's about it, yeah. This is Gabe Pauling and Robbie Owens reporting for Cougar Media News. Thanks, Robbie and Gabe. Staff member Jack Stretch is here with the last countdown of the semester. Let's head over to the studio to see what the top five news stories are for this week. Hello, I'm Jack Stretch, and I'm back for another edition of the Cougar Countdown. Starting us off, following the fatal shooting of Andrew Brown Jr., North Carolina police have not released the body cam footage from the incident. This has led to unrest and protests as the people hope to see the footage soon. At number four, Liz Cheney was ousted from her seat of power earlier this week. This is following her public feud with former President Donald Trump. Cheney lost support from her fellow Republicans because she didn't buy into the theory that the 2020 election was rigged. After 19 seasons, Ellen is ending her daytime talk show. She claims her reasoning is that she needs something new to challenge her, although this comes shortly after strong accusations of the Ellen show being an extremely toxic workplace. In the runner-up spot, gas prices recently spiked by 20%. This is the result of a ransomware attack forcing the Colonial Pipeline to shut down. Fearing prices would rise even more, demand jumped, causing many gas stations to run out of gas. In the number one spot, things are slowly going back to normal. The CDC came out last week and said that fully vaccinated people no longer need to wear masks in most indoor places. This is very encouraging as over 50% of adults in PA are already fully vaccinated. That's all I've got this week, and I thank you for joining me. Now back to Liz and Bob in the studio. Thanks, Jack. That's all we have for you this week, PHS. Have a great weekend, and remember, seniors, there are only five days left to school.